So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay. Well, listen here. Hello, and welcome to 90 Day Fiance. Okay. I'm Mr. O, and today, Miss H and I will be discussing Season 4, Episode 3 of Before the 90 Days. In this episode, Giant, Oozman, and Oozman have some thoughts on Lisa's tummy. We get introduced to our new bisexual couple, Stephanie and Erica. We learn that Ash's longest relationship is with his florist. Yolanda's catfish gets off the hook. Ed makes it to the Philippines. And Tom triggers just about everybody with one Instagram post. As always... We'll end with our life lessons, class stunts, and students of the week. If you like what you hear, please remember to give us a rating and review. And also, if you watch Love After Lockup, please listen to our other podcast, Love After Lockup. Ha ha. Okay. All right. Stay tuned and enjoy. Hello, Mr. O. Hello, Miss H. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Apparently today is International Women's Day, right? That's what my Google just told me. Uh, yes, it is. Happy International Women's Day. Yeah, I know. I've like I've never heard of it before, like yesterday. But okay, I, I, I've right. always heard of, like March is Women's History Month, and we've done that for a while. But the mm-hmm. specific like International Women's Day, I hadn't heard of. Made a big deal out of it before. Yep. Oh, let's start off with the ladies then, since it's International Women's Day. Oh, excellent! The new couple. We have uh, Stephanie, twenty nine, from Yonkers, New York. So already, so her profession is professional YouTuber, apparently. Yes. So this kind of goes back to our original theory. Exactly. Everybody, everybody has something to promote. Um, yep. And on this, in this season. Yep. So she is a YouTuber, and she has kind of a little bit of an interesting background. She's originally from the Czech Republic. Uh, she moved here when she was seven with her parents and her brother. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe her brother may have come along after they were here because her brother looked a lot younger than her. Do you think he looks seven years younger? He could have been. Yeah, I could see him being a teenager. So his her brother might might not have been born in Czechia, might be born here. Right. So her and her mom are very, very, very close. Uh, but she struggled when she first got here because uh, she didn't know English. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she didn't really say much. She was very shy. She said she felt very isolated. And it wasn't until after she started uh, posting videos and getting really positive responses on her YouTube channel that she really kind of came out of her shell. Right, right. And it was, I don't know. So it, it was funny. I did think it was an interesting reveal that they did when they talked about when she was a youtuber because she didn't say it right away because they had her like singing a song and it was kind of a lame song yeah and i was like oh no this song about sounds pizza? really earnest and lame and then it was like then she started saying about how much she loved pizza in the song and i was like oh it's a joke oh okay <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah i was like i actually feel better that the song was a joke than it was actually like an earnest song definitely um the kinds of things it sounds like she does on her youtube channel is mostly like lifestyle i think is what she said so Uh uh-huh yeah just those videos where i don't know i don't watch many of them uh that's not my my youtube diet but my kids man just always watch people who are just like talking to the camera like why are you watching somebody talk at you i don't get it i'm a little bit too old for the people talking at me yeah, I don't get a lot of the whole, like, uh, just watching YouTube videos after YouTube videos. It, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't appeal to me. I need more of a storyline. Right. So uh, she then had someone slip into her DMs uh, on her YouTube channel, and they started messing, messaging each other all the time. Uh, her name is Erica. She is a photographer, and she is from... The Outback of Australia. So we get two Australian couples. Curiously vague for me. Like yes. the Outback. Hmm. Right. The Outback is very big. Like very big. Oh, it's huge. It's like she's from Siberia. 90% of Australia. And Australia in itself is a huge country. It's huge. Like, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was very curious about because I've been to the Outback. And I was like, wait, is it a place that I've been in the Outback? Is it farther in? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anyone really lives in the middle too much because it's super dangerous. Like there's like thousands of things that could kill you out there. Yeah. So when I was, when I, when we were driving through the Outback and like it came out and it was like that, it was like, I know there was something on a map. And I remember being like, holy crap, because it was on a map. I was like, oh, we only have, you know, it's only 200 more miles till we get to this thing, you know, 
like Andersonville or whatever it was, right? Whatever, some random name on a map. And we got there and it was a goddamn gas station that like yeah. five people lived at. I was like, that's on the map. <laughs> Why is that on the map? Yeah, because most of the middle of Australia is not populated. Because, like I said, like everything can kill you. Spiders, rattlesnakes, or their kinds of snakes. Uh, random other scorpions. And things that we don't have here. There's a right. lot of poisonous things out there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not good. So, anyways, Erica lives in the outback. Uh, and, you know... They both fell in love over their love of pizza, it seems like. Apparently, yeah. They seem to have the same vibe. I mean, Erica looks a little bit more like a... Um, Artsy. Yeah, free spirit. Like, she has the... She has the, She wears, like, the... I assume it's, a, like, wigs that she wears. Like, the crazy colored hair and, you know, really bold outfits. And Erica doesn't... I mean, I mean Stephanie doesn't have quite that much. Oh, um, sure. You know, yeah. it's definitely a little bit more reserved. Yeah, I think that Stephanie, though, she uh, has the same kind of, like, energy, though. So, yeah, to me, they kind of had the same vibe a little bit. Uh, but uh, then Stephanie goes to a tennis lesson with her two friends, Sanders and Heather. And, uh, you know, Stephanie is just very excited about this trip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Heather says, whoa, 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 you just need to chill with your expectations. I like both her friends. Both of her friends were very level-headed and realistic about the situation. Right, right. And I, okay, so I really appreciate, oh, we'll get to it actually, because the big thing that comes out in this conversation is that her family doesn't know she's bi. Right. And so she would have to, in order to tell the family what's up, she has to then come out. And I really appreciated the one, the one friend she was talking to mm -hmm. was an out gay man. So at least we had that, we have that kind of perspective. Right. So Sanders, uh, her gay friend, says that lying to her mom is worse than actually coming out because you're lying in the end. Right. And that's really hurtful. And when, you know, they find out eventually that they're going to be very hurt that, you know, she lied to them. Mm -hmm. So Magda is uh, Stephanie's mom's name. She wants her to marry a doctor or a lawyer. And then Stephanie adds, a man. A man. <laughs> She's like, but a man first and foremost. That's what she thinks. Right. Yeah, that's right. what she thinks. And so hopefully it hopefully when it when it when it when she when it finally goes down, it doesn't go down like that. You never know. But that's what she thinks. Yeah, I don't know. I hear a lot of stories, um, more so than like kind of the bad, but more than so the bad reaction. I hear more so than not that you know, people coming out that they're so, so scared and that, you know, their family is either really supportive or just mostly they knew. They knew. You know, that, something, that's, yeah, that's, something that's they That's what I hear the most common. Like, oh, no, we knew that. That's your – that is a function of where we both live. We both we both are coastal people. Like, sure. Like, more liberal-minded places where that kind of stuff less likely than in other parts of the country. So – I don't, want to, I don't want to minimize other people's actual, you know, suffering or whatever. Yes, that's actually very fair because there are definitely some parts of their country that are less tolerant. And, I mean, I can say in California we voted for gay marriage. So, I mean, I think that kind of gives you right. some kind of idea of how your community may feel about it. But, I mean, Stephanie's from New York. Yeah. They have a yeah. decent gay community in New York. Well, and, I mean, I would imagine they do in Prague as well. They come, they come from Czechia, so, you know. Sure. So uh, she's just very fearful of her mom's reaction, and I feel like she's maybe not giving her mom enough credit. Her mom mm -hmm. seemed really lovely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she did seem like – she was a mom. We talked about yes, moms being definitely. worried about everything and travel and just always – everything they could possibly think of to be worried about, they're worried about, and she's, right. that, she's that mom. She definitely is. Uh, Stephanie blames it on her uh, mom being Eastern European. She's like, yep, she's always cooking a ton of food and cleaning anything that she could possibly clean. Okay, I, was so like, I think it's funny that so many different ethnicities and cultures think that their mom's cooking a lot of food is unique to them. You know, like. <laughs> You know, like, well, Italian moms, they just cook so much. And, and Eastern European moms, they cook so much. And these Jewish moms, they cook so much. And it's like, okay, okay moms just cook a lot. With the, like, with the exception. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, apparently, 
<laughs> the exception is British moms. So my mom is British and she does not cook a lot. And my sister's uh, mother-in-law is also British, also doesn't cook a lot. So maybe it's not a British mom thing. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. British. Yeah, because my family, I, I, they're, not, not, they're not that close. That's my entire family background is just the British Isles. And yeah, yeah there's no... There's no cooking. excessive not, food. That's no. There's no excessive food. <laughs> no excessive foods. Oh yeah, I guess. There's no that thing where they like that that thing where the mom just keeps shoving food on your plate. That's not. I know. My mom probably told me I was getting too fat. She's like, "That's enough for you. You're getting too fat." Yeah. They might offer me another drink, but not enough. <laughs> <laughs> not oh, more goodness. food. Yeah. So I thought it was really cute. It's just a random side note. Stephanie has two dogs, a pug and a black lab. They were cute. They were super cute dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Magda comes by to visit and take care of them, even though she lives an hour away. So it's very good of her mom. Mm-hmm. So, okay. But this mom, Magda does have like actual reason to be directly worried. And that has to do with um, Stephanie's medical condition. Yes. So the whole family comes over and they think that... They're filming for a different reason, which is interesting. Like Yolanda it's and two. her family all thought that it was medical stuff as well. Uh-huh. It's interesting that they're all hiding being on the show. Like they're embarrassed right. to be on 90 Day before the 90 Days. Yeah. Oh, geez. Right. So the whole family comes over for, I don't know, this feast of her mom making too much food and taking cleaning cleaning dishes that are already in the dishwasher, that sort of thing. <laughs> I need one of these moms in my house. I really do. Oh, yeah. No. Wow, that is crazy. Now that I think about it, my mom would never wash my dishes. I know. She might she might yell at me if my dishes were not done. She'd be like, why do you have dishes in the sink? Should yes, I was going to say, my mom certainly would complain about the <laughs> cleanliness of my house, but she is not Cleaning lifting herself? a finger to do anything about it. No, no. Oh. Okay, so they get their feast and they eat. And, okay, I'm going to make... <laughs> Did you see the way her brother was holding his knife? Oh my God, like he was going to... Stab like, someone. He was like gonna stab psychopath. someone. But he had the, that underhand, like picture. You're gonna do that. Like you're in Psycho. You're psycho, you know, yeah. Bates, You're gonna stab somebody, and now bring it down and try to cut your meat like that. Like that's <laughs> oh how he's God. holding it. I was like, who is this Psycho? Ah, oh, that's so weird brother. too. It was so Coming weird. from a European family, European families, I think, tend to be like much more proper about mm-hmm. like how you hold your utensils. Like my grandma used to give me so much shit for like how I like held my knife, and so you can't. Here's another thing that's like very European that's not very uh, American at all, but it's um, you know how people will like cut their food and most people cut their food the same way. Americans don't cut it any differently than Europeans, but Mm -hmm. the difference is Americans will then switch their hands to uh, switch the fork hand fork from one hand to the other and then eat it like they normally would. But Europeans don't do that. They keep it on like the same hand and just eat it with the fork upside down. So I eat – when I cut meat, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't switch. I, I use – I cut it with my – cut. I put my knife in my right hand. The Europeans definitely with the upside-down fork thing. Yes. But I keep my fork in my left hand and my knife in my right hand and I just – Eat it right side up? With my left hand. I do eat it right side up. Yeah. But with my – I don't switch hands. My, it's yeah, in my, I was not I, allowed to do that as hand. a kid. I was not allowed to do that as a kid. I had to have the fork upside down, you know, and eat with – the food, like, with the fork upside down on the same left hand. So. I don't think, I don't even know how that works. I, I still think, do I that. I like, do it. <laughs> but the fork upside down is, what, is what's getting me. I don't know because yeah. I don't feel, I don't change my grip, but I still, the fork still goes in right side up. So I don't know how that works now that I'm it's thinking magic. about it. It's magic. Thinking about it way too hard now. All right. So uh, she has her medical condition, which is aplastic anemia. Mm -hmm. And so basically her bone marrow uh, failed. And so for a while there, she needed a lot of bone marrow transfusions. Mm -hmm. So because of that, she's very uh, very susceptible to getting sickness. And it can be like simple colds can even be deadly for her. I'm sure. Yeah, it has to. It has to have. A huge impact on your immune system so i'm sure it had yeah. she's immunocompromised and everything and she had to sure. have yeah like she had, to, she had to have blood transfusions like every other day mm-hmm. because when her marrow failed it wasn't making any new red blood cells so like you need more blood every day which is crazy 
So one of the reasons why her mom is so nervous about her traveling is that, you know, she's really at risk for infection. And I mean, she's not wrong. Like, I feel like airplanes are the worst mm -hmm. for carrying sicknesses. Yeah, you know, you got are. the recycled air. You're in the same small confined space with right. other well, people. You, and, and you're going to go to a whole other continent and be exposed to like a whole different set of like bugs. Like, yeah, that, that doesn't seem good either. Right. And so, I mean, this is even though it happened a little while ago, it's like she's still dealing with the repercussions of it. And she has to get blood work done every three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be in Australia for exactly three weeks. So she's going to get her blood work done right before and right when she gets back. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's one of those ones we talked to. We, we you know, made a deal out of the mom being, a, you know, mom's worrying a lot. But uh, I would worry a lot, too, if, if this yeah. is the situation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mom is justified this time, at least. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, Magda, Matthew, and Matthew, so her dad and brother are both Matthew, uh, they ask why she's going to Australia. And so Stephanie says that she has a friend over there. And she gets, like, very suspicious. Like, I don't yeah. know. If I were her mom, I'd be incredibly suspicious because she was very weird about. Very cagey about what she, the way she was answering these questions. Right. Yeah. And so it, almost to the point where I was like, I feel like they could have sussed out that it's not just a friend. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it because her mom just rolls her eyes this entire time. And, you know, she originally had planned to tell her family at dinner, but she just couldn't bring herself to. She now, just didn't feel ready. Yeah. And that's something I I will defer to anyone because I am, you know, as straight as can be. So anybody who has to come out, I will defer to them on when the appropriate or proper way and time to do that is. That is nothing I know anything about. No, absolutely not. And I feel like, you know, even you have to know and read your family, right? Mm -hmm. Because even though it may have worked a certain way for you in your situation, you know, like her family is a different set of people and she's going to know them best. So I right. don't know. Was it the right time? Maybe, maybe not. Um But yeah, I, I do just, think there was you know. a bit of avoidance too. Because, I mean, her family wasn't being hostile or anything no it seemed like no. an okay time yeah it, it seemed like it was but that's again that's just something i i am in no place to pass any kind of judgment on whether that was or was not a good idea or a good time sure all right who do you want to talk about next all right let's talk about uh, let's talk about yolanda Old oh yo -yo. poor poor yolanda oh so yolanda she was excited about this trip because she said that she never went anywhere uh, mm -hmm. Because she's an introvert and she was embarrassed about her body. And I felt really bad for kind of judging her an episode or two ago for like never leaving the country because I kind of almost forgot, you know, that right. she was a larger lady at some point and mm -hmm. that she felt like that was holding her back when it came to a lot of things. So I can understand why, you know, she was a little bit more introverted and someone who stayed home a little bit more often. So at least she figured something out. She was concerned about her conversation with Williams about the airport. Right. When he pointed her to a, uh, what was it? What did I say? It was a parking service or a parking, <laughs> right. a parking lot next to the airport yeah. as the name of the airport. Right. And so he ghosted her since uh, they yeah. had their weird conversation. Yeah. He usually texts back. I don't understand. Maybe he get, maybe he doesn't have his phone yet. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I guess he hasn't been seeing him. The answer is to go back to the gram the to message him. Who has ever in the history no of Instagram one. called it the gram? I don't know. No one. No one. It's the IG. I've heard it. Yes. I've never heard it as the gram. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's why it was notable and I wrote it down. Yeah. So she's starting to get concerned. I feel bad for her because she – I definitely feel like this whole ghosting phenomenon – is like a more recent thing and but not by recent as in like you know the last year or something but like i want to say 20 years ago people did not ghost each other or it wasn't as big of a thing yeah or maybe it wasn't as noticeable because you aren't in constant communication with people all the time like you would you like are you now. Be now yeah, yeah. that's true that's true because it wouldn't be so weird if you didn't talk to somebody on the phone for like two weeks that wouldn't be unusual 
Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, well, we were texting like every day and then he just stopped for two weeks. That's right. And there's right. no reason. But definitely people who aren't used to that don't like take the hint. <laughs> like, yeah. Be like, oh, I see what happened here. Okay. Moving right. Along. Well, I was going to say that, and this kind of goes back to why I even brought that up, um, because Yolanda hasn't dated in like, what, 30 years? 30 years? Yeah. And so, I mean, this is absolutely like very uncharted territory for her. She mm -hmm. has no idea about the concept of ghosting, or at least firsthand, mm -hmm. you know, in the context of dating. So it's just, I feel really bad for her. Yeah. Yeah. Because he tries to make it as obvious as he possibly can They're like this i've ghosted you you've been ghosted you're you're not getting a response anymore <laughs> just go right. away and this is what i was saying last week about you know like good for him in that he made it super obvious that he was a catfish you know yeah. and so it was kind of like uh, you know come on yolanda like get the hint you know i don't I don't know how else he could say it other than changing his username to catfish, <laughs> which we'll get to that. So she's just hoping it's a big misunderstanding. And then she's like, she's just obsessed. She's like falling mm -hmm. hard for this guy. So she's just like, you know, basically cyber stalking his, the gram profile mm -hmm. and notices something really weird happened. Yeah. When she, she was, was like scrolling of, through. She was in the middle of browsing her browsing his pictures and then all of the pictures disappeared. And uh, what, his name changed and yes. the picture changed, but the bio stayed the same for some reason. Right. Like, I don't know why he changed everything but the bio, but yeah, everything's fine. Well, it was funny because he was like, he deleted his Instagram and it's like, no, he didn't delete his Instagram. No. That's not what happened. Completely changed his front. Yeah. It turned into a whole new name she's never even heard of and he doesn't have any new pictures on the account. So he also uh, cleared out all of his followers. He purged his followers. That's right. So he had zero followers and zero following. Yeah. She's still calling him at this point. Yeah. At this point, like it's not even, that's what I'm saying. It's not even a hint anymore. He's just like, wake up lady. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Oh my gosh. My question is, and I hope the answer to this is no, did she ever send him any kind of money? I thought she said she didn't because she was supposed to send him money so he could come to America. Well, he asked right? her to, and she was he like, oh no. To, that's what I said. Yeah. And then she said no. And she was like, well, of course wasn't going to send him money. So like, yeah, I don't know. I wonder if at that point, he kind of lost it and was like, ah, well, I'll keep her on the line and see what goes on. And then once it came to the point where she was like, well, I'm buying my plane tickets. He was like, all right, done. Cut it off. We're yeah, but it. that's that what I'm work. saying. Like, how did he not cut it off when he realized she wasn't willing to give him money? So it's yeah. like, I feel like after she told him that, like, maybe he would keep trying a couple other times. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when you get to the point where she's like, okay, I'm planning on coming to visit you. I'm planning to come visit you. Like, forget, like, the details of it. Right. You know, what dates are you free? Because she at least had to know dates. At that point, I would have ghosted her then. Because it would have been, I would have been, yeah, I would have made a couple more attempts to be like, oh, no, nah, none of this time's really good. And come up with some reason that I had to come there instead. No, nah, my, my house is being fumigated and I'm getting my hair done. And uh, I really <laughs> need to come there instead. Um and still try to get the money that way. But yeah, it, it seemed like he only made like one attempt for money and that was it. Right. I don't know. It just seems unlikely, I guess. So. So what's weird though is, is she's still trying to call him, but he hasn't blocked her because he picks up and hangs up. Yeah. That, I don't know. I feel like both of them are not that bright. <laughs> you know, like he is clearly amateur hour when it comes to this whole scamming situation. Absolutely. I mean, he would have definitely been better about the whole airport thing. If you're trying not to be suspicious, he would have been better about, I think like, didn't like the first time the episode came on, somebody just like reverse image searched his things yeah. and boom. Like, yeah, that's, that's amateur hour. Like, right. This is definitely amateur hour. So it's kind of like, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't surprise me mm -hmm. that he didn't think to block her. She's gonna get. To, she's gonna get to the bottom of it. Oh, I wonder yes. if. Uh, wonder if that's gonna be. I would like to. I would be on board if the rest of this was forensic analysis. Yolanda <laughs> trying to find the catfish for the rest of the season. 
don't know how tech savvy Yolanda is. I mean, That's, I I would be on board with her like going around trying to find this catfish. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I I don't know if I would really be interested in that. Yeah, exactly. Get him off the gram. But I don't. Yeah, because I don't know what they're gonna do with the rest of her season. But no. Next week we have our second catfish guy. Like, I wonder if we just have oh, two catfishes, right? We haven't maybe. seen him yet. Two catfishes equals one real couple, so. Yeah, knows, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Speaking All right. of real couples, let's talk Darcy and Tom. Darcy and Tom. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. So, we start off with Darcy working out at the gym. Darcy does not work out at the gym regularly. That was the most awkward workout no, I think I've ever seen in my life. Everything. I. <laughs> what was she doing when she was running? I've never seen someone run like that before. I've never seen anybody run with that kind of cadence. She touched the control panel on the treadmill every three seconds. Oh my goodness. And then it's like, I feel like her lips are hindering her from breathing. And like, it really comes out because it's like she's breathing hard at the gym. You know, and it's like she doesn't know what to do with her lips, but she needs more air. <laughs> she t- she gets like the lightest weights and like bends over like three times with them. <laughs> what are you oh doing? My gosh. <laughs> yeah, so ridiculous. But she's trying to work off that anger because she is mad. Mm-hmm. So, yep. oh man, this was convoluted. This was so it wasn't convoluted in itself, but okay. So, what she's mad about is Tom's social media postings. Because right. Tom is Tom, and it's with another woman. Yes. But she didn't find out herself. No, because they had a fight and blocked each other. <laughs> yes, which I'm just like, oh my gosh, that in itself should tell you something. And this yes. happened weeks before. So weeks they've before. been blocked for, it sounded like three weeks at least. Yeah, but Florian, who is Stacy's fiance, who we met last season. Yes. Is... He is still friends with Tom, unblocked, and saw this picture of him and, and showed it to Stacy, who showed it to Darcy. Right? right. Okay. See, convoluted. How she finds out, way too convoluted. Yeah. And, okay, quite honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if someone reposted and even tagged her in it. Because I feel like there's a oh. lot of shenanigans like that going on on Instagram. You think they snitch tagged yeah. him? That, that's called the snitch tag, by the way. Oh, you know, okay. I just learned something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening as well. Um, this woman, um, I believe everyone was speculating that he was kind of dating someone else. And uh, she, I believe, is Canadian or American, if I'm remembering correctly, because I'm remembering from when this actually happened in real time, which was a few months back. Okay. Uh, it was definitely November-ish, I think, that this kind of came out. And uh, he looked cozy with her in the picture. It kind of mm-hmm. looked like a weird engagement picture. It did. I'll give you that. I mean, it was very his posed. pictures all look very posed. And all, I mean, it was a, it was a, you know, signature Tom picture, just oh, douchey, God. douchey. Why, why did why did you take a picture and go for it? I want to maximize the smugness and I'll oh, look as gosh. douchey as possible. Let's do oh, that. You're making me want to punch you in the face right now, <laughs> Mister O. Ugh, you and your Tom impression. It's too real. Too real. It's, little, it's too real. Least, my hair is not curly like his. The curly hair really sets oh, it. My that, gosh. that to me is the piece. You know, just... I realized what it reminds me of. You know that goth character in South Park? How he has that random curly mop on the top of his head? <laughs> okay. It reminds me of the goth kid. But he's I'll not have goth. To pull up he's, a picture. He's suave and they oh, I gosh. I did like on, 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 Insta- on, on, on um was it Instagram on Reddit they started calling him Lames Bond, which I really liked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's the worst. Anyways. So what were we talking about before? The picture, because he took the picture and they were on the stairs and she was all up in his crotch, which, yes, I mean, I guess is technically correct. But if somebody said, oh, they had a picture where they were all up in their crotch, <laughs> I don't picture someone like sitting on the stairs in front of someone, like in between their no, legs. I'm picturing them think... turned around the other way. Yeah. <laughs> like that. The... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Like literally writing each other? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, like grinding or something, which he oh, would goodness. also do. Ugh. I don't need to think of Tom dancing either. Oh, so, no. I know, we need to get past this segment because it's too much Tom image. Too much Tom thinking, right? Oh, my Which is gosh. funny because he wasn't even in this segment. Like, he was literally not I even know, at all. but I, my hatred for him, like, him. transcends this segment. So, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she's just really upset that, you know, Tom's just playing with her heart. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, she wants to get to the bottom of it. Uh, she doesn't want to be strung along. Why would you say you love me? So then we get to the part where Stacy picks her up at the gym for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. How get, did you get there? And they go get smoothies because apparently they have a contract with a smoothie company or something. Like everybody in every segment got smoothies today. Oh, um, goodness. But they have just this glorious twin bitch fest going back and forth. <laughs> just... Oh, I knew he was never no good. Oh, no, you got to cheat yourself. Just going back and forth, <laughs> feeding off of each other. I know. She feels deceived and disrespected. That's because she was deceived and disrespected. Yeah. <laughs> and then she thinks that they're still together because they never actually broke up, which I'm like, yeah, that's kind of true. And I mean, okay, now who's to say with editing what came first you know, because, you know, with production, it's like they do show segments out of order. Uh -huh. But if she had truly had this conversation with him the last episode where she's like, if you're going to break up with me, just do it now. And then, you know, the picture of the uh, Instagram person like comes out, you know, that that's extra, extra shady. Right. Like you yeah. should have just broken up with her then if there was someone else involved. That's true. But but who's to say? Who's to say? She saw all the yeah. red flags and she ignored them again. Uh, um, it's like, well, that's good that you're recognizing this, but let's actually like pay attention to our red flags. Yeah. It's no good to be like, oh man, look at all those red flags I ran over behind me. Oh, as she's like goodness. hitting, as she's, in my, I'm imagining her in a car just running yeah. over red flags and looking behind her as she keeps hitting more red flags. And now she's, she's dragging looking at the ones, them behind her. Because she's looking at the ones behind her. Mm hmm. Yeah, she says she's fine, but she's obviously not okay. Obviously not fine. No. Yeah. She's worried about what else he's hiding from her. It's like everything. Do you even have a real relationship? They don't even talk. No, but it sounds like she's getting ready to go to New York to throw down. Right, yeah. Because I was say, they don't even talk. He doesn't even have to actively hide anything. Right. I mean, he literally posted it on his public Instagram. It's not like yeah. he, was, he wasn't being... Really all that deceitful about it. Yeah, but Stacey thinks going to New York is a bad idea. She just thinks, you know, you just need to walk away. Just be done with it. Who even cares? Why even give him the time of day? I mean, that's the actual good advice, but we need a good TV show. And a good TV show is go to New York and throw down. <laughs> yeah. Can't film someone ghosting someone. That's really... No, yeah, that doesn't... It's really boring. All right. We already saw that. Somebody yep. being ghosted is only, only so entertaining. Yeah, right? But, so yeah, true. me not texting someone. Not, not all that great. Yeah. I don't think Stacey and uh, Darcy have that interesting of a life to just see what they do when they're not on their phone, I suppose. Yeah, I don't think they do. I really don't. I think they want people to think they do. They have some sort oh, of glamorous yeah. life. But I don't know. I think it's just kind of normal. I think they just have a normal suburban life with they do, I think. huge amounts of fillers. And <laughs> that's the only oh, difference. Gosh. Yeah. All right. Uh, who do you want to talk about next? Hi, let's go with Lisa and Usman. Oh, theirs was so interesting to me. I had a ton of notes on them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. So we kind of start, we start with Lisa, but all she does is get on the plane and oh, I'm almost going to be in Nigeria in 16 hours. And what, it wasn't interesting. And then uh, gushing about Usman again, saying mm -hmm. that they're destined to spend their life together. And it's like, how can you tell? You haven't even met them. They have the connection. They have everything. They have everything but the physical part. Oh, my gosh. I know. I feel like her voice got so much worse. <laughs> it's like, did you, I don't know, decide to smoke a pack of cigarettes <laughs> right before your interview? Right. You did. I mean, she's getting close to that, 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 that Monsters, Inc. character. Mike Wazowski. Roz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> definitely. Oh. All right. So then we, then we get introduced to Usman. That's when things get 
that's when we start to hit the road. Yes, I loved his segments. <laughs> so he wakes up from sleeping in the same bed as another dude who we find out his his name is Giant. Giant, right? Yeah, I don't know why he got that nickname, but all right. Uh, maybe it's like Big Ed. It's either Big Ed or something that's inappropriate for the show. Well, I don't know. I was going to say they're sharing the same bed. So Usman hops out of bed. And the first thing he does is hit that hookah pipe. Yeah, I don't think it was like tobacco in that hookah pipe. <laughs> but he wakes up like, wake and bake? Yes. Wake and hookah? Not so much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So Usman, his, uh, Usman has two roommates. Mm-hmm. Who, one of them, coincidentally, is also named also Usman. Named Usman. That, is, right. that is going to get very confusing. <laughs> so I think we have to start calling our Usman... Soja boy. I don't know. Can we call the other one, uh, like, bed-making Usman? Because that's what he brings to the table. He makes the bed. <laughs> yeah, he's basically the house mom. Right, right. It's, so we got Giant, Usman, and Usman living together. Right? Yes. Because he says that. He's like, Giant is my best friend. And, you know, yep. Usman and I are also very close because he makes the bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And he says he's the woman of the house. He's the woman of the house. He cleans it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he's, uh, his friends know him as Superstar Soja Boy, and he shares the room with his friends, and, you know, he goes on to kind of do his little part of the interview. He wants to be the king of hip-hop and R&B in America. In America. He wants to be Mm -hmm. famous. So that's already suspicious, because, like, that's what he talks about, is if you're going to be the king of hip-hop in America, you got to be in America. Yep, that's part of it. So he's, uh... Telling, talking to his friends, they have like a little get together, and uh, they're talking about Lisa from America. His friends do not look happy about the situation at all. At one point, they call her this. This? Would you okay with this? And she's like, don't do call her this. this? <laughs> okay, so this is the part that got me because he he woke up and smoked the hookah, right? I'm pretty sure Usman is a pothead, right? Oh, possibly, yeah, sure. Because. He says, uh, "What have you been doing?" He's like, "Oh, I've been this. I've been in the studio all day long." And the guy's like, "Oh, I can see that in your eyes." So I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> "Wow, like, oh. I did not catch that." <laughs> okay, all right, fair. Uh, yeah, so they all see a picture of Lisa, and they're mm-hmm. just like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." They make oh, that God. that cringy emoji face, just like, yeah. And then uh, Usman says he doesn't consider beauty the most important thing. So for relationships, he says age doesn't matter. Yeah, that's important that you consider beauty the important thing. If this is if if this this, <laughs> okay with this yeah. So we get introduced to a new friend, Joseph, and mm-hmm. Joseph is just like I'm concerned over her age. He is drunk and funny. He says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should you should just focus on your career. Right. Well, and, and that that that's what Usman is like. Apparently, Lisa just jumps in on anybody in his like social media anybody on his messages she like she like dms them and like threatens them you stay away from my man like if they put in like a hard eye emoji or something and he's like that's a little yeah Usman is just kind of like this is not ideal no <laughs> like, it's not he's... ideal because it's making my career more difficult by right. stopping my fans i have fans i'm a man of the people I have to let the people get access right gotta have access to the soja boy yep so, but it's okay because he knows how she is and, you know, he, he's just resolved to, you know, just trying to tolerate her. Right. And I was like, oh God, t- tolerance? This is what your relationship is now? You haven't even met her. Yeah. And you're already like resigned to tolerance. Well, because it, it wasn't at this point that, the, that, that, that it kind of was implied that she's going to be like hanging out in the studio and like trying to run things. Yeah. And like, yeah, that won't work. Yeah. No, so he's made a decision decision to be with her, and you know he says uh, one of his friends says, "Well, I guess love is blind, or at least Usman's blind. <laughs> I don't know. Usman. I don't. I don't think it's love. I just think it's Usman. Uh huh. Or his uh greed, his his end goals kind of blur the vision in front. He's 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 looking a hundred yards ahead. Well, okay, this is what I don't get, and this kind of goes back to Michael and Angela as well, the original Angela. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. I just feel like these guys are not unfortunate looking guys. No. There no, are a lot of desperate women in the US. 
they can find a better one is like what I'm thinking, you know, one that and by better, I don't mean to like, you know, say that Angela and uh, Lisa are terrible people. When I mean better, I mean a better fit, you know, someone that is closer to their age, maybe a little bit more understanding, isn't crazy jealous and going to be super controlling of their life. Like, Uh that's what I mean by better, a better fit. Like, Uh there are other Uh people in America, not just these two. Right. Well, especially, like, okay, so if we're comparing them, Usman is much more attractive than Michael. Like, Usman's a good-looking guy, right? So I he would have no problem in, like, America. If if he was in America already and he was trying to, like, find women, he would do just fine. Which is what Lisa's concern is because she knows that. But I don't get why he doesn't get that. I'm sure he must get attention even there because he's a good-looking guy by Nigerian standards too, I would think. Oh, I'm a, yeah, definitely. So I don't understand, like, why he thinks that this is his only option. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like maybe he does really love her, but I, it's like I don't understand why you would choose to be in a relationship, even if you love the person, if it's this hard. Right. Yeah, it shouldn't be this hard. I think some people kind of think – I mean, it's relationships are hard and good relationships are hard, but not in the same way that these ones are, if that makes sense. Like there's lots of things yeah. outside of relationships that are hard, but you like doing it, right? <laughs> like you enjoy putting in the work and you enjoy practicing it. You enjoy doing it and you get better at it and it's good. It was hard work, but it was like, oh man, I barely even noticed I was working. That's that's what I feel like uh, the work for a, hard rela- uh, for a good relationship should feel like. Well, I... I just feel like all the other things that people have to put into their relationships, Mm -hmm. it's like we're not even getting to that part yet because they haven't even met each other. Uh, You know, they already have like unique challenges and then they're going to have like the every day like common challenges later. So it's just Mm -hmm. like this just does not seem like a good situation. True, true. So at this point, they go off to the airport. They have a nice car. What kind of car was it? They were driving a Mercedes. I wonder if they rented it. I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. They dressed up nice. They had their traditional Nigerian clothes. They were all dressed in the nines. But the friends came with, which violates like the one thing that we heard Lisa say last time. was like, oh, right. first 24 hours is you and me. That's it. This is so funny to me, too, because he says, oh, it's a surprise. And it's like, is it a surprise because you think you're going to get in trouble? Or is it a surprise because you genuinely think that she wants this? Right. I th- almost feel like he did. Like... I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of getting the impression that she is almost dating one head of a three-headed monster, right? Yes. She, that's going to get old real fast. Right. It does seem <laughs> that they're, like, inseparable. And I think, uh-huh. like, my take on it is that uh, I'm leaning more towards that he thinks it's a surprise because he thinks it's something that she would like. Mm-hmm. And it's because I think he may be not mature enough to realize that just because he likes it doesn't mean his partner's going to like it. You know, he would love it if his friends met him at the airport and like got to meet these fun people, you know, but she's not about that. No, no. I did like, um, I did like on the ride to the airport with giant and they were like, when we meet her, what can we do? She's like, you can say hi. He's like, can I hug her? He was like, no, you can't touch her. He was like, I want to hug her. Yes. That was really (laughs) funny. I like these friends. Oh, to me, they're way more hilarious than the goofballs, the original yes. goofballs. Yeah. Yeah. The goofballs They're really just, funny. They just giggle and laugh. They just like laugh at yeah. her until the point where she got mad. They These right. ones actually seem to be clever and like, you know, witty. And <laughs> They're endearing too. And yeah. yes, the, with the witty, like they're funny and like they're mm. likable. I like these guys. So yes, uh, then they ask, you know, is it going to be a problem if he's not attracted to her? Uh, but, you know, he didn't say anything. So they finally meet her, and when she comes walking towards them, I was like, my God, she looks so old. I I don't know what it was. I think it was like a combination of her having her hair pulled back. Right. The shirt she was wearing. Like, she was Mm -hmm. wearing this, like, really baggy, like, I don't know. It looked like something, like, an older person would wear. You know, and these, like ill-fitting like pants and you know these like slippers and nobody and nobody looks good when they get off a ridiculously long plane ride like everybody's just trash they're tired you're sure like 
sword you just being cooped up nope it's like everybody's least good look oh well i mean you could always pull a darcy and like you know uh-huh. freshen yeah. up in the bathroom for like three hours right oh god yeah but uh yeah it just she just seemed so like oh yeah like that this is your first impression uh-huh. like yeah eh. yeah so he says he feels he's in heaven and paradise and then he says, and then you know, they do the IT. Yeah, then they go to the talking head. Yeah. Right. Well, I like, I, I really love the production troll of putting their <laughs> talking heads back to back. Or they do Lisa's first, and he's she's like, oh my God, he's so smoking hot. He is hotter in person than his, <laughs> his pictures didn't do him justice. I'm the luckiest woman in the world. Wow, holy crap. Well, yep, she is lucky because he says, yep, he says, She's more belly than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> when he first said that, I was like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? Like, I know what that <sighs> means, but like, what does it mean? <laughs> oh, man. Because it was funny, too, because the friends, too, like, they were getting in the car. They were like, all the pictures. They were like drawing a line right through their chest. It was like, all the pictures cut off right here. They didn't see that she had oh tummy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He definitely thought it was worse. She thought it was better. So. Uh-huh. For being someone who didn't want to meet the friends, she was actually really nice to them. And she appeared, like, really friendly and, like, welcoming. Right. No, she did. She did. She didn't freak out about it. Like, no, she absolutely could have been didn't. worse. Like, she she rolled with it. She she was – because it wasn't their fault, like, that they were there. She did, it, wasn't the, it wasn't a deal or a rule she made with them. Like, yeah. So she was good about not taking it out on – and she didn't really take it out on him either. But that's because, like, she was horny. <laughs> right. So they're like very the friends are really super kind. They grab her luggage, they're packing up the back of the car, and so the three of them, Usman, Giant, and other Usman, uh, they're in the back and they're like mouthing stuff to each other. Uh-huh. Like, you know, she's fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She she's all belly. She got a belly. And he's like, are you okay with this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah are you yeah. sure this – are you sure you, are you this sure? is what you paid for? Are you sure this is what you bargained? Like, yeah. should, should we just leave her? Like, right. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of whispering going on in the back. Right. Right. When the trunk was open. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they're sitting in the back. Uh, Usman and Lisa are in the back. And Giant and the other Usman are in the front. And she is – trying to get all up in there in the back of the car she first off starts stroking his face with the rose, <laughs> the rose that he bought her i was like what is happening right That's now so weird she was making a creepy face when she did oh my gosh i would be so oh, creeped out if i were is, him are you touching my face with the flower because it was yes, like his like so goatee weird. it was so weird yeah she is mad that he actually broke his promise and like I said, her voice is just sounding, like, destroyed at this point. Well, I'm sure the plane didn't help that either. No, that's true. So she's, like, scared of the driving. And then Giant says, everything's bad in Nigeria. <laughs> it was kind of like, you say that about everything. <laughs> you just blame everything on Nigeria. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So uh, Usman's excited to introduce her to his life. And they are starting to make out, like, and it's not even make out. It's like, they're just kissing. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you see her creepy lizard tongue, like, just <laughs> darting at him. Like, it's not in his mouth. It's, like, outside, just darting at him. And I'm just like, oh, my God, what is happening <laughs> right now? Seriously, so- you... you- you don't approve of Lisa's uh, making out, making out style. You would no, not want to make out with Lisa. <laughs> the tongue should not be outside of my mouth at any no. point. This is not appropriate. It's like, I feel like you need to take French French class again. Is that where they teach you French kissing? I don't know. It's supposed to be in your mouth. Maybe we should just teach that in high school because there's plenty oh of people that don't know what to do with anything. Oh, my gosh. That is – oh. Okay. You know what I really hate, too? Um, I actually, oh God, the last person that I really dated did this. He would come at me like tongue first. And I'm just like, what the no, f- are no, you there has doing? To be a, I hate there that. There has to be a seal first before yes, the tongue becomes seal involved. first before tongue. <laughs> like, don't come at me tongue first. What are you doing? Oh, gross. Also, if I feel like I'm going to gag because there's too much tongue in my mouth and it's not right. mine, like, ugh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Too it shouldn't much. be so far back that you're going to gag. This is bad technique. You've no, made out with too many bad. bad. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Apparently I have. So uh, Usman, not Soja Boy, the other Usman, uh, house mom Usman, mm-hmm. uh, he said, you know, uh, it's appropriate to kiss, you know, a few times, like three or four times. They kissed a thousand times. <laughs> and it was, but the thing for them was because it was like, I don't know how, it's, it's gross sounding kissing. Oh, yes, like, it definitely some people was. Can kiss but... and it's fine. And you're like, oh, they're kissing in the back. I guess some people, it's just like, what are those noises? How do you, yes. what, how do lips make those noises? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It probably had to do with their weird tongue action. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, The friends carry their luggage for them as they drop them off at the airport. And then (sighs) they're in the interview and production's asking, like, are you attracted to her? He's like, "Mm." Uh, well, is that part when they ask if he's attracted or I was, was this the one where they asked, are you excited excited for sex? sex? Uh, Well, I kind of got that he wasn't that attracted to her, but then is like, are you looking forward to having sex with Lisa? Which is just like, oh my god, production. He wasn't as crude as this, but he was like, eh, she has a pussy, right? Like, God. So what he actually said was, (laughs) she has lady parts, I have man parts. (laughs) I'm not sure that that's Okay. (laughs) So, you know, we'll be cooking, grooving, cruising. Oh, man. What we... (laughs) I'm glad we weren't. I'm glad we weren't in the room for that part because watching a make out was gross enough. I can't imagine either of their sexual techniques oh, being God. anything anyone would have watched. Well, I'm concerned that Usman thinks that sex involves cooking, cruising, and grooving. I think he thinks it's like <laughs> dancing. I guess. I guess. I mean, those are all dances, right? When you're cooking, you're dancing. Yes. It's a dance type. Grooving is dancing. I don't know. Better than pounding. Know. We got that. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Okay. Who do you want to talk about next? All right. Who do we have? Who do we have um, left? I think we have just... Oh, we have Ed and Avery. And, uh, uh, let's go with yeah. Ed first. Let's go with Ed okay. first. Uh, 17 and a half hours in three different planes. I feel like he's doing it wrong. He, no, I looked that up. That is the best you can do from San Diego. It's crazy. It was crazy hard. Well, then freaking don't go from San Diego. I feel like there are much more options if you go to L.A. And it's well, really not that, that long. Because his one of the planes, when he got on the plane last week, it was to L.A. So he flew from San Diego to L.A. Oh. From L.A. Well, from L.A. to Seoul and from Seoul to Manila. Okay, that makes sense. Like, because I usually fly out of LAX if I'm flying international. And mm-hmm. yes, it's a little bit farther hike, but, you know, better uh, connections and things like that. Like, I would never fly from San Diego. But San Diego to LA, that, you can't even count that. Well, he did. That was one of the three planes. Because I well, looked then up all the I don't flights. have any sympathy for you. It's really two planes because that is like the dumbest flight. It's like literally 30 minutes, if that. Yeah, I believe that. All right. Yep, so he's worried about his height being an issue. He's confident about his personality, but, and this is so sad, like, when I hear people say things like this, he says he considers himself not attractive. Yeah, I mean, it's important to have a realistic assessment of where you are. (laughs) Sure, yeah, but I mean, to say that out loud. Yeah, that's that's another thing, yeah. Right, because sometimes it almost sounds like people sometimes say it, like, in a way to, like, and we've talked about this with the I love you. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I'm just so ugly. Right. They're fishing for compliments. Waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Fishing for compliments. I mean, he wasn't this time. He clearly is like has a complex about the way he looks. Well, you know, what's interesting is like I was thinking, well, I feel like things could be better if he had a better haircut. But what's interesting is that. Right. But Rose doesn't. But then we find <laughs> out that Rose actually likes his hair. And I was like, eh. All right. Yeah. He, yeah, he needs to do something. Well, I, what I don't like is. Because he, he went and dyed his hair. He has that, you know, jet black hair. Dry. But he's going to dye his hair. He's got to dye his beard, too. It looks so weird to have yeah. that jet black hair and that all that, that gray beard. Sure. You know, at least shave or, you know. Yeah. So he's waiting at the airport and he is there for 20 minutes. He's hot and sweaty and just freaking out. So yeah. then we kind of go back to Rosemary. They always do that like 24 hours before situation. Right. Yeah. So he can get their... Uh, their take and perspective on things Mm -hmm. so we open in on her and prince hanging out in their one bedroom 
area, and he's just shooting this, like, Nerf gun at her butt. <laughs> that's gonna be fun. All right. All right. Children, they're a blessing. And that's what she says. She's like, her son is a blessing. It's like, oh, God. Uh-huh. That's what you say when you're trying to remember myself. I love my kids. Remember right? that. She says their life is simple and small. They don't have a kitchen or a toilet, and they just sleep on the floor. But she's remaining positive. Okay, I have to say, she has amazing teeth. So, yeah, I guess so. I mean, they're straight. They're very straight. They're very white. But that's the thing is a lot of people who are poor and live from like very poor places usually have, can have really good teeth because they don't, what are they, what, they're not, they can't smoke. They can't uh-huh. drink coffee. What All the things that make your teeth yellow, like they don't get, they don't get tooth decay as much because they don't have as much sugar. Huh. Interesting. Well, good side effect thing because she has really great teeth. Sure. Yes. Yes. And I was going to say they're really straight. That's not always natural. That's not always that. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Right. So she shares uh, the house that she lives in. So it's a two-room house. She lives with her sister, and the house is in the back of her sister's store that we heard last week that they're trying to save. Right. So I, I wonder a little bit if, you know, they lost the store. Does that mean they lose their house too? I don't know. You would think so. all connected? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So we find out that Rosemary's uh, mom died. And uh, her sister is pretty much her second mother. And it mm-hmm. looked like her sister had kids, too. Like, there was a little bit of an older girl kind of running around. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. It didn't really say exactly who it was, but it seemed like there were other kids around. Right. Yeah. So she just straight up says she wants Ed to take care of her son. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. 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 It didn't It didn't come off very well because that's because then we switched to Maria who was basically like, yeah, I don't know, that Ed, he's he's not attractive, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter, though, because he's rich. Like, that's all that matters. He's rich. So Maria is the sister, yeah. right? Uh, they were talking about how Ed is different than the guys that she typically goes for, because he's older and fatter. Yes, older and fatter. Oh but he's God. rich. And she's like, so, yeah, some concerning things about, like, what they're in it for. Um, right. But what I find interesting is if you were really just looking for someone specifically to like take care of your son, like why would you want to have more kids? But she wants two more kids. She, she wants does. a boy and a girl. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I, people always say that. And I'm like, you know, you can't like pick, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Get you, what get you get what you get. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can pick that you have two, but uh, what you get is is not really up to you. And so I I I, I uh, I'm definitely not one who was on board with like, well, let's have another one and try to have that boy. And it's like, you know, again, that you might not get that boy. Right. And then you just have another girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's bad. Cause you know, you hear about stuff like that, like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll try one more time. And this time, if we don't get a boy, then we're just done. And so you end up with three kids instead of two kids. And then all of them are girls when you wanted a boy. Right. It's like, at some point, I feel like if you really wanted a boy that badly, you probably should have just adopted a boy yeah. after the first one, right? Yeah. If you want control of the situation. Yes, that's that's the only way to know what you... What, <laughs> yeah, mean, right? Yeah, and it, and it depends on how you do that, too, because, um, like, I have an, uh, an aunt and uncle that adopted, and they just adopted, like, from... Like, they, you know, got in contact with... They did it through an agency, but it, the, she was pregnant. You know, they, they got what they got when they came oh, out. Oh, like, okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the age, too. Mm-hmm. If you adopt, like, a two-year-old, I'm pretty sure you would know. I, I hope you would know. I hope <laughs> yeah. you would know. All right. Uh, so then we meet Freddie, who is uh, Marie and Rosemary, which I'm kind of like, oh, God, that's confusing. Uh, Rose and Marie's dad. And he is the same age as Ed. Uh, he looks better than Ed, I feel like. He's pretty good condition. Yeah, he had, like, I couldn't tell if he didn't shave his neck or if he had, like, some sort of scarring on his neck or something. Yeah. But in terms of, yeah, well, I mean, he's he's just not as, he's not as big. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, right? So, uh, you know, Rose keeps on saying, you know, age doesn't matter. So, Freddie, he just wants to make sure that Ed respects Rose. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he wants to make sure that he has the proper intentions and that he's just very protective. Yeah. So okay. So this is the other thing that came up that is going to be hmm, interesting, and I'm not, not surprisingly, 
Uh, it seems like Rose is the only one that speaks any English at all. Marie might yes. speak a little, and her English, especially compared to the other uh, Filipina women we've seen on the show, is not as good. It's not Marcel bad, but it's oh, not gosh. as good. Right. And I actually want to say that that... Uh, so we've kind of talked about Hazel and Tariq, and they're the most recent uh, couple from the Philippines. And mm-hmm. I think they were also on before the 90 days, I want to say. So I was going to say that Hazel, her English didn't seem that good. And I think at the beginning, especially, she definitely came off more shy. And I think it was because she just didn't feel comfortable speaking English. Okay. Like, you know, on TV. So uh yeah her english isn't great it's always i always find it hard to tell as like an audience person you know? sure that's true that's true but yeah that seems like i would get it seems the dad doesn't speak any english at all like it's all tagalog right so so uh we get to the part where rose actually shows up to pick up ed from the airport and she's all in red and looks super cute mm-hmm. uh she's excited and nervous and then she finally sees him. Uh huh. And um, so yeah. And basically, he it's it the, her end result. Her end assessment is that well, you're shorter and fatter than I thought. <laughs> right. But I think it's like uh, this kind of goes back to his insecurity. He just needs to chill with it because he asks her, "Am I everything that you thought I would be?" Right. Like he needs assurance that it's okay. Right. Yeah. Did you think I would be taller? You know? And so it's like just straight up going for the things that he's insecure about. Right. Because he needs that affirmation. Mm-hmm. Well, and also what you can't, he wants to kind of wants to get her on the hook right now saying like, it's okay if it's you're too short. Right. Just that's right. Get that in the bud and get it, get it right now. So we don't have to worry about it anymore. And then if you do want to worry about it, I can say you already told me it was okay. Like, right. So she says that she's attractive, always you. So, yeah, kind of going back to her English isn't, yeah, if her English isn't that great. Right. Yeah. So she says, it's okay for you. You are man. You are my king. So after she says that, he now has faith in love again. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I believe in love again. So it's her first time in Manila, even. Yeah, that's interesting. I thought that was interesting. And her first time in a hotel, which is not as interesting if it's her first time in Manila. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, No, she. we found out that it is not her first time in a hotel because on New Year's, however many years ago, she stayed in a hotel room with five guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And immediately Ed is suspicious and kept on asking her questions about the friends. Were there other girls there? How do five uh-huh. How do six people, like, fit in a room? Like, what are you people doing? Is this some kind of weird orgy? Like, I feel like he wanted to ask so many questions, but he he could definitely tell he was suspicious and asking probing questions because it, like, raised a red flag for him. I mean, it does raise a red flag, but if she says it out loud, like, that is definitely, if she was years ago involved in a gangbang in a hotel room, like, she's not going to bring that up for you like that <laughs> yeah now, i like, don't know who prince's dad is right, <laughs> because it's there was be, some random right. gangbang in this hotel room yeah it's not gonna be like well have you ever been in a hotel before before and it, she's just gonna out and be like well yeah that one time i was in a gangbang but it's like oh <laughs> i'm sorry the last time i was in a gangbang was in the hotel room <laughs> oh yeah yeah i have been in a hotel before <laughs> my goodness yeah, uh, but okay, so I think they're really trying to highlight the fact that uh, he is suspicious about the number of friends she has because uh-huh. it came up about her Facebook that she has like thousands and thousands and thousands of friends. And so he's like, who are all these friends? And so now this kind of weird situation has come up where he's like, wait, who are your friends? Yeah. So I feel like they're just trying to set things up right now. Uh-huh. But uh, in the car ride to the hotel, they just don't seem to be very into each other. No. like It really reminded me of Tim and Jennifer, mm-hmm. like from the last before the 90 days, where, you know, Tim is looking out the window completely, like, not even looking at Jennifer, and she calls him out. Now, it's not quite that bad. They're at I... least not, like, on completely separate ends, but, yeah. Yeah, I feel like... Ed, because he said this when he said he wasn't attractive, 
was like, she is way out of my league. Yes. Like, in terms of attraction, which isn't a totally off the bo- off the wall assessment in terms of just pure attractiveness, right? Um, and so I kind of feel like he's like, well, since she is the upper hand, she has the the power, like I just have to wait for her to like touch me or try to kiss me and like that. And like, it would be creepy if I like try to be like all over her or I tried to like, right. you know? And so he's like, I don't want to be creepy. So I'm going to wait for her. And then she either just doesn't get that or isn't that into it. And so it's just kind of like awkward. Like, are we going to like kiss or anything? Like, what are we going to make out? <laughs> yeah. I can't really see her making the first move. Right. But I, I, I also think he's terrified to make the first move and come off oh, as yeah. coming on too strong. Sure. I can see that. Definitely. But then it kind of, is this going to be a season where it's going to be like a Tim and Jennifer? Like, will they or won't they the entire time? I know. And after he brought that, like, you know, um, bulk size thing of condoms that he's got. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, he also bought her some lingerie, too. That purple lingerie thing. Oh, yeah, thing. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, I don't know. But she doesn't, I don't know. She doesn't seem the, she doesn't seem overly aggressive. Like, yeah. I can't really see her being the instigator but i don't know maybe she would surprise you maybe maybe lady in the streets kind of situation (laughs) right (laughs) yeah all right all right so so last up we have avery and ash okay ash is going as much as you hate tom as much as tom gets on you oh man i feel like ash is is right is gonna get me is it the crazy eyes so the crazy eyes but okay so we start we met ash and he's sitting in the water because he's a spiritual person and he wants to feel all the vibrations of universe as he sits in the cold water and like i'm <laughs> as they're playing the didgeridoo did you as notice the that <laughs> I was oh. like, oh my gosh. TLC, oh. or I should say Sharp. I don't know why they, we've talked about this before. Like, why did they play all this culturally stereotypical music depending on what country we're in? His culture. <laughs> he is from Mauritius. He is not Aboriginal. He is not of Native birth peoples. But they're in <laughs> Australia, so the didgeridoo it is. <laughs> it's a damn city, a modern oh, city. Oh my goodness. Oh, sitting in the sitting in the cold water, meditating to so that the universe vibrations can. Oh, well, you know because it medicates and heals him. Oh, he doesn't drink, and but he also says he doesn't smoke pot, which could be a thing. Okay, because Avery's really into pot. Confused about that? (laughs) How do you not smoke pot? But then, how on earth are you on Avery's Instagram page when her whole Instagram page is about? pot oh that's integrating right. it into food because that makes no sense to me why would that Instagram happen page. yeah that's true i am very suspicious of him saying that he's anti-pot which feeds into my other reason i didn't like ash he is so full of shit he okay is sure just full of it and so to say like oh i wouldn't i don't smoke i bet he drinks and i bet he smokes all the time but he says he doesn't okay good yeah i like it all right, so we start off with Avery. She's dropping Silver off to stay with her dad, and she's a little nervous because this is a long time she's ever been, the longest time she's ever been gone from her kids. Mm-hmm. So she's never traveled and spent all this money for love before. For love. And then she's been waiting for a long time. It's like, have you? I feel like you guys have only been online dating for six months, right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't yeah I think so and I think she broke up with like Silver's dad like Silver's two like two yeah, years it like be that long ago yeah so. yeah she's just being dramatic I think yep so yeah she hopes for the sake of her kids and the future that Ash is who he says he is once again being dramatic and it's like why drag your drag your kids into this yeah like, why so mm-hmm. she says she's putting her life on hold by going to Australia how you're there for three freaking weeks that is not putting your life on hold. No, that's vacation. That's vacation. Yes. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but I do agree that she's taking time and money away from her family. That's true. Yes, that's but, true. But yeah, putting your life on hold, like, no. Yeah, you're right. That's vacation. That doesn't count. Like, don't be ridiculous. So we find out more about Ash. 
he came to Australia to go to university, mm-hmm. and then he ended up, ended up never leaving. Right. And so we, we, the questions we had had before, and I still am in the air about this question because we were wondering if – because he could, he said he couldn't get a passport, right, to come to the U.S. Right, yeah. Which means that he still doesn't have Australian citizenship. Uh... And we know he's been there for at least 15 years. Right, but um, don't we have that status to permanent resident? So a permanent right. resident isn't quite a citizen. And I don't, obviously I don't know the ins and outs of immigration policy in Australia, but pretty much in the U.S., if you if you're a permanent resident for seven years, you can just go ahead and apply and you get a citizenship. Mm-hmm. Like you, it's it's that's like the easiest jump to make is from permanent resident to citizen, and right. it's just like a matter of time. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I was interested in knowing what he studied at the university to make him have the tools and skills to be a relationship coach. Um, I think his tools and skills for being a relationship coach are like... His face? Uh, yeah, his tools. I was going to say his face and his body. <laughs> like his literally yeah. his tool. Um, and then, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> and then like... Yeah. His uh, predilection for uh, spinning bullshit is his skills. And there you go. Oh, I don't know. Because it's like there's nothing he was saying. I mean, we, we saw him on the phone with a client, right? And yes. he was just re- regurgitating the, la- the love language stuff. Like, yeah, it's not definitely. anything anybody who's interested in, like, fostering relationships. relationships hasn't read before. Right. Yeah. So he says he prefers dealing with female clients or women clients because... Uh, he says they're willing to listen uh, and to be open and communicate. So then he kind of talks about his background a little bit, uh, transitioning from full-time dad to single dad. Uh, he really likes Avery because he's attracted to her spiritual side. He thinks their souls may have met, uh, uh, you know, in another lifetime. Okay, I can kind of see why you don't boundless. like this guy. <laughs> yeah. These are all things I can see that you are annoyed by. Yeah, and I, yeah. Can, I can see. Yeah, sure. So I feel like he's doing okay for himself. It seems he like is. he has a house that has a pool. He drives an Audi convertible. Yeah. He seems to be doing yeah. okay. And he just makes, okay, so you know how Tom has his face? He has yeah. this face where he has those he, big bug crazy eyes. Oh, and yeah. like a fake smile that doesn't involve uh-huh. the upper part of his face at all. That he just talks the whole time like, like stops. Oh, <laughs> out. I can't deal with it. Oh, goodness. Yes. So uh, they go to the flower shop. Oh, where we I meet love... Dominic. Dominic the florist oh, Dominic. is the best. Oh. Yes. So he's there to buy flowers for Avery. He didn't even open up the box. He didn't open so up like the box. What... Yeah, hey. I was like, what is in there? Hey, him and Dominic have a very special they have an understanding. florist client. Really. They, they... Yep, they do. Yeah. Dominic knows exactly what <laughs> exactly he wants. Exactly what he wants. And yes. Yeah. Because he's his best customer. He's his best customer for 15 years. Yep, 15 years. I just, I just love the way production did that. It was so perfect, so perfect. Oh my just, gosh. yeah. So, who does he buy flowers for? Uh, women, of course. <laughs> well, how many different women? Any, one wow. particular, lots of them. Oh, lots he gets of them. lots of girls. How many? Oh, I don't know, but it's a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then he even like elaborates and says he knows exactly what to say and what to do. Uh huh. Just it's like Dominic, how do you it. know that? How do you? Uh, Maybe he's put the moves on Dominic, got some discounts. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. Maybe. So, uh, or maybe he's helped Dominic get women. He's oh. kind of like the Australian hitch over there. True. True. I mean, that yeah. seems like that, that this is kind of his job. Hitch was a relationship coach, wasn't he? Wasn't that the whole yeah. point? Yep. So then, uh, this is the part that annoyed me about Stupid Ash is that. You know, they're talking about if he's going to propose to Avery and he gives this super ridiculous convoluted answer that would that he said, it's up to her if I propose. That's what does that a... even mean? How is it? No, that sounds like something you say before you like torture someone. Well, it's up to oh you God. how long this will take. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know that that was just a very weird response because I think it was up to her. You'd be proposing. She seems to be really into you. Yeah, but she, remember, she was the one that broke up broke up both times, right? Like oh, she God. was the one who did it before. I don't, I don't trust this guy. I don't trust him. Yeah, I don't know. All right, uh, I think that was it, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, who was your student of the week? 
Uh, my student of the week, surprisingly enough, was Darcy. I feel like, now, who knows how long this is going to last. Maybe it's just one episode. Uh -huh. But I feel like she actually acknowledged red flags. <laughs> and then she actually was like, you know, what she said she was going to do was the right thing. You know? Right. Like I said, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know if she'll actually follow through. But based on what she said in this episode, it's like, Darcy, good for you. We're seeing some growth. Okay. So I had a lot of trouble <laughs> because I kept going through all the couples and was like, nope, nope. No. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so interesting enough that you said Darcy because I said Stacy. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Yes, because she was like... We saw it last year, and it's, and it's an improvement based on what we saw from Stacy earlier, was mm -hmm. she didn't seem like she was being competitive with Darcy. She was, like, supporting Darcy and giving her advice and good advice of just cut this off and be done. Like, that was the right, right advice, whether she takes it or not. So I liked. Yeah. Okay, what about your dunce? Oh, Ash. <laughs> uh, yes I had a feeling like, it was going to be Ash was Flash, just... I think it's going to be Ash like the entire time I know like, I have to I have to avoid picking just like you have to avoid Tom every time yes I, I do to, I'm going to have to avoid Ash Tom has been it I cannot pick him again so <laughs> actually kind of funny I really thought about Dunce and I was like no one I felt like people were not incredibly terrible in this episode I wouldn't say they were incredibly great either sure Okay. Because past Darcy, I still struggle to find, you know, a student of the week. But no one did anything really terrible. I mean, other than Williams changing his stuff, mm -hmm. uh, changing his account. Uh, were people annoying? Sure. Uh, but, I mean, there weren't any crazy fights. There wasn't any crazy drama. Sure. I felt like this was just more of a comedic episode overall. Yeah. I'll give you that. Nothing particular egregious that was like, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Life lesson. Okay. My life lesson was no matter what the situation is, do not have crazy PDA in front of your friends. You're making it awkward for literally everyone and no one wants to see or hear that. I mean, don't most people learn this lesson in high school? Isn't that usually yes, when you, you stop think. doing that? Like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Some people are just so over the top too, and it just makes it so cringy. Like yeah. no one wants to be there. Like, and it's even kind of funny for me. Like I would say, you know, even if I'm in public places and random strangers are like that, like all over each other, I get uncomfortable with that. I don't even know those people. Yeah, it is weird. It is weird. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, yeah. I mean, you should. Yeah. It, it's it's it seems like it's just so teenagery. That's what I'm saying. It's a high right. school like. Teenager thing because you're like I don't know can't you do this say, at home so get a room gotta yeah do you it say get public. a room and teenagers are the ones who can't do it at home so we got to do it somewhere else I and mean, you guys you adults can go to your place of residence <laughs> right. and do whatever you want yeah leave everybody else out of it yeah uh, what about your life lesson all right so um mine goes back to back to Darcy and Tom <laughs> once you've gotten to the point where you're blocking each other on social media yeah you're, you're done. Your relationship is done. Like, that's there's no, true. I think we're still together, but I blocked him on Facebook. Like, that's, no, no, you didn't. You're not still together. <laughs> right. True. Very true. Like, do you need an explicit conversation about that? Especially the part where they blocked each other, because that means one person blocked the other person, and they're like, well, fine, I'm blocking you back. Like, they were <laughs> trying to message you. Why would you, that doesn't make a difference if you block them. Right. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Okay, so uh, we have a decision to make, and we're asking everybody to help us out here. So on our other podcast, uh, Love After Lockup, uh, we're wrapping up this Life After Lockup season, and I think we have two more episodes. So we're trying to figure out uh, what we should recap next. So if you all recall, we were doing some classic episodes before this uh, Love After Lockup uh, started this season. And so we have been debating whether or not to continue on with our classic episodes. And we are on season four, I believe of classic mm -hmm. or what's hot on the block right now is love is blind. The Netflix series. Um, so we set up a poll on Instagram, our Instagram, which is 90 day. Okay. That's M M 
K-A-Y. I was like, wait, am I spelling it right? Yeah. Yeah, two M's. Uh, 98 MK, and we've set up a poll on our stories and also our highlights. So if you click on those, um, there is a poll set up, and you can vote for which one. And we will start recapping that in about three weeks, I believe. Right after that's right. Yeah, our last two episodes. After the yeah, yeah. After that one's on. So yeah, please get your feedback. And until then, we won't we won't go anywhere with this show. We'll still be cap recapping before the 90 days and. Any other series that they decide they want to come up with next? <laughs> yep, we're here uh, for it. So we're here, we're here for it. Uh, yep. Yep. If you want to, also while you're on Instagram, uh, give us a follow. Uh, my quarter is almost over, Mister O, and so I'll be back to the same schedule I had in fall. So my hope is that I will have time again to be better about our Instagram. I ed- have admittedly dropped the ball and been a little bit MIA, but uh, if you want to give us a follow while you are on Instagram taking our poll or, uh, or, and, or, uh, give us a review if you haven't done so already, uh, that would really be helpful for other people finding us. Mm -hmm. And other than that, we will see you all next week. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Good.